Hi there. Today's mini lecture is on the bureaucracy. And I guess you saw that on your assignment sheet and probably said, oh no, what a boring topic. But you know it's really not boring at all. It's kind of interesting. I think it's really interesting and I hope you will too. I'm going to give you just a kind of a, a brief overview and your chapter is very good on the bureaucracy. It really zeroes in and I'm just going to give you the bare bones outline here uh, of the federal bureaucracy and uh, you can read and fill in the blanks for yourself. So I hope you'll do that. Um, first, the, the name bureaucracy, what is that? There are bureaucracies, certainly in government, but there are also bureaucracies in business. There are bu bureaucracies in education. All schools are bureaucracies. This college is a bureaucracy. And it's generally in this shape, if you're drawing a diagram of it, which would be a hierarchical structure with specific responsibilities. So you have your, your top dog here at the top, and then your lesser top dogs going down to the worker bees at the bottom and everybody has their specific responsibilities. A hierarchy operates on principles and um, these principles should enhance efficiency and effectiveness. So that's what a bureaucracy is and we all live and work with bureaucracies every single day. Now, the federal government certainly has a huge bureaucracy. There are three million civilian workers in the federal bureaucracy today working uh, throughout in the executive branch or mostly in the executive branch. There's some that work for Congress but very few and a few some that work for the court system but very few. So most of these three million civilians are in the executive branch somewhere and there are 1.4 active military in the federal bureaucracy as well. So when you hear political candidates say let's get rid of the entire bureaucracy uh, that is a whole lot of jobs that would disappear, a lot of functions that would disappear that we rely on, including 1.4 active military people that are guarding our very lives every single day. If you look at the executive branch, remember Congress makes the laws, but the function of the executive is to enforce the laws or, or carry out the laws. Certainly one person can't do that, so you have this huge bureaucracy to help the president do that. So you have the president, the vice president, and then there is a White House office that is in the White House or very close to it. These are the personal aides of the president that he keep things going every single day. And then there's a, an office called the executive office of the president. And in that office you have certain organizations, also bureaucracies, like office of management and the budget that write the budget and try to see that it's carried out the U.S. Trade Representative's Office, and the National Drug Policy Office. There are other offices as well, but that's just an example of that. Now, then you get to the, the this, this part is where your three million people really reside and work every day. You can divide the federal bureaucracy into four groups. First, there are 15 cabinet departments. Um, and the oldest ones, I guess the top four, would be the Department of State, Department of Defense, Department of Justice, and Department of the Treasury. So you should know and read your book carefully exactly what they do in State, de Defense, Justice, and Treasury. But there are others, uh, there are 11 more, and that's everything from agriculture and commerce and labor and energy and education and transportation and health and human services and housing and urban development, et cetera, et cetera, within the cabinet departments. They are headed up, the top dogs in the cabinet departments are called secretaries. In other countries they might be called ministers, but here they're called secretaries. They are appointed by the president. They are political positions and they are uh, given the advice and consent of the Senate. And so they also head up their department, but they also serve on the president's cabinet and advise the president. So a very, very important job. I think you should know who is the current Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, Attorney General of the United States, and Secretary of the Treasury. So please learn that and bring yourself up to date on those four. Another group are called the independent agencies. These are not as large. These are smaller and generally they do spe more specific things. Cabinet departments do lots and lots of things, 
but the independent agencies like the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, the Social Security Administration, or NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, have pretty specific things that they do, and uh, their heads up here at the top, again, are appointed by the President with the advice and consent of the Senate. The next group are called Independent Regulatory Commissions. These are your sort of alphabet soup of regulatory agencies. Uh, you also hear a lot in politics about, let's get rid of all regulations. Well, these independent regulatory commissions help regulate our economy. The Federal Communications Commission. If you got rid of them, then I don't think you could hear any TV. The airwaves would be jammed with, with transmissions. There wouldn't be any order because FCC uh, controls that. Federal Trade Commission. The Federal Reserve System. A lot of people are saying, get rid of that. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit later in more detail. They, they determine the monetary and fiscal policy of the United States. All right, very important, federal regulatory commissions. The head of that is appointed with the president, but generally it's more than one person. It's a board, and they're very independent because it's very difficult for the president to remove any of these people. Uh, the last one are government corporations. Uh, examples of that would be the U.S. Postal Service and the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Uh, these are government agencies and they start out with seed money from the government, but they're supposed to act like a corporation. They're supposed to, if they make profits, uh, put their money back into their activity. So you can see that the U.S. Postal Service is acting or trying to act much more like a corporation. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation uh, guarantees our deposits in banks so that if the bank fails, you won't lose all your money. So all very, very important in the federal bureaucracy. There are bureaucracies in all the states. There are bureaucracies in the cities. There are bureaucracies everywhere. So this is just the basic of this. Read and fill in the blanks, and we'll see you next time.